In this screencast, we look at how the propeller blade angle of attack is determined. So here we have a propeller. It's a tree-bladed propeller attached to a, an aircraft. And around the propeller we have a plane of rotation. So the blades are rotating in this plane. And there's the axis of rotation. So let's assume that the blade is rotating in this direction. A clockwise direction as we look at it. As the propeller blades rotate in this clockwise direction, in the vertical plane, in the plane of rotation here, as the blades move down, there will be a relative airflow over the blades. And that would look something like this. Now the aircraft would also have some forward velocity. So as the aircraft moves forward, there will be a relative airflow in this direction towards the prop. And they would look something like that. But the air that the propeller sees will be a combination of both this vertical component and this horizontal component. And that is the relative airflow, which would look something like that. Now let's look at it more closely. So let's take this section here of the propeller. Let's assume that's the propeller cord line. Here is the velocity. Uh, due to the rotational velocity and here is the velocity due to the forward airspeed of the aircraft. Combining those two vectors we get a relative airflow and the definition of an angle of attack is the angle between the cord line and the relative airflow. So there's our angle of attack. Now what happens if we increase the RPM? Well let's reproduce uh, this scenario here on the right hand side. There's a prop and its cord line, and there's the road, uh, vertical speed, and there's the horizontal speed, as we're here. And there's what our angle of attack was. But let's say we increase the rotation speed, then the vertical component will get bigger. So our vertical component, let's say, is now that size. Our airspeed is still here, and our resultant relative airflow is now there. Now if we look at the angle of attack between the cord line and the relative airflow, we can see that the angle of attack was here, has now grown to here. So we can say that if the RPM increases, the vertical speed would increase, and this would cause an increase in the angle of attack. Now let's examine what happens with a change in airspeed. There's our prop blade and cord line. There's the vertical component, there's the airspeed as it was, and there's the angle of attack. Now let's reproduce it over on the right hand side here. So that's everything is the same here on the right as it is here on the left hand side. But now we're going to increase the airspeed. So our resultant relative airflow to this new airspeed will be there, and there's our new angle of attack. And as we can see, the angle of attack was here has now reduced to this angle here. So we can say if the airspeed increases this will cause a decrease in the angle 